it is the time for the message for all ages, and this is when we invite our children, our young and young at heart, to come join me on the stage. Thank you, Jillian. So if you would like to participate, I'd love to welcome you. And grown-ups, if you're feeling young at heart, you can join us. And friends on the camera, scoot a little bit closer to your screen, because this one's for you. We have a lot of moving parts. So friends, as we get settled, today, hello, Fred Sutter. Today, I want to talk to you, get ready for it, we're in a church, the Bible. And I want to talk to you about the book of Matthew, which is one of my favorite books. I even have a verse tattooed on my foot. Don't get distracted by that, you can see it later. <laughs> And in the book of Matthew, Jesus delivers what's called the Sermon on the Mount, which is really just the first time that Jesus talks to his disciples about all of God's values, right? Who we should be, what we should do, love our neighbors, do justice, have mercy, and also what we shouldn't do. And so he lists all of these conditional statements. Does anyone here know what a conditional statement is? Have you learned it in school yet? Not yet? Okay. I'm going to give you a primer so you can impress all your teachers when it comes. Okay? A conditional statement is an if-then statement. If this thing is true, then this other thing is true. If it's raining, you should probably have an umbrella. If it's a right angle, it's probably 90 degrees. If-then. And so in these conditional statements, we're talking about if this is true of God, then this is also true of God, okay? And I love chapter 6 specifically in Matthew because all of these conditional statements, a lot of them talk about worrying. Has anyone ever felt, show me your hands if true, so worried about something? You couldn't even get excited about anything else. All you were thinking about what you were worried about. Hands everywhere. The grown-ups are raising their hands too right? It's so hard to focus on anything else when you're so worried. But in the book of Matthew, Jesus mentions worrying about a lot of different things. So for example, Jesus talks about physical needs like clothing and food. Jillian, could you flip this for me? Ooh. <laughs> and so one of the verses even says, if God will clothe even the flowers with their petals and meet their needs. We're so much more important than the flowers, God will take care of us too. That's a promise. That's an if then. If God will take care of the flowers on the ground, God will also take care of us. Because God has our back, right? That's, that's actually what Jesus is saying. That because we don't have to worry we can instead put our minds and our hearts to thinking about our dreams and the things that we're excited about and the things that we care about that are happening in the future. So I wonder if you can do an activity with me. Every single month on Zoom, me and my friend, Miss Angela, run a group called Queer Connections, and it's a group for our LGBTQ adults. And we did this beautiful activity this past Monday talking about what we were planting the dreams that we have, the things that we're working on right now, what are we planting as we think about spring in hopes that they will blossom or bloom into something really magical in the future? And so I wondered if you'd be willing to share with me, what are some things you're planting? What are some dreams you have? What are some things you're excited about right now? And maybe we can write them on this board. Going on vacation. Going on vacation, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, playing on my school soccer team. Ooh. School soccer team. Spring break. We are feeling rest are and relaxation, <laughs> that's what I'm hearing. What else are we planting? Baseball game. 
baseball, baseball games. Heck yeah, open season. Miss Elise, can grown-ups tell us what they're planting as well? Grown-ups can tell us too. Grown-ups, we have like one or two from you. What are you dreaming about? What are you planting? Call it out. The grown-ups are stumped. Have you ever heard this? <laughs> Miss Jillian, what are you dreaming of? Oh my goodness. I am dreaming of having lots of picnics with new friends. Ooh, so friendship. Mm -hmm. And I'll go last. I am planting seeds of peace. Mm. Let me give this back to you to hold. Thank you so much, Vanna White. <laughs> do what I can. So friends, I love all these. I love that they are playful. I love that they are serious. I love that they are embodying what is important to you. And I believe that because Jesus was right about community and love, and injustice, and peace, and all the things. I also believe that Jesus is right about this. I believe that Jesus is right about the if-then statements, that we don't have to worry, and instead we can reframe our minds to think about opportunity, to think about promise, to think about what is to come. And so I'm really grateful for this time today, and I want to encourage you to think about your dreams. There's a lot of worrying to be had, but it doesn't actually add value. What adds value it's what's in your heart and what's in your mind and what we are creating together as a community for the future that we want. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. If you can repeat after me, I'll pray us out, and then we'll see a hump our way back to our seats, okay? So repeat after me. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for the promises you make. Thank you for the promises you make. Help us remember. Help us remember. That we don't need to worry. That we don't need to worry. That you are holding us. That you are holding us. And therefore, and therefore, we can dream. We can dream. Amen? Amen. Let's see a humble our way back to our seats. Thank you, friends. Yeah.